This is your sad, lifeless desk. And this is Rebecca Boleen. Hi there. She's an expert in bringing the outdoors indoors, and an expert in biophilia. Sounds scary, right? It's basically just interior design using plants. Research shows that exposure to nature, even indoors, helps reduce stress and promote well-being. Rebecca is going to explain how to choose and care for your office plants for sustainable good morale. The first thing you need to do when you decide you want to bring plants into the office is to assess your light conditions. I'm a big fan of this light meter app. You can use it on any iPhone or Android and be able to assess how much light you have in your space. Oh, we've got about medium light here. One of the best ways to measure light is foot candles, and it's one of the easiest to understand. Low light plants are plants that usually get about 30 foot candles. Medium plants are plants that need about 50 to 100 foot candles. And highlight plants are usually plants that need 150 foot candles and up. What if my office has more light than that? Well, you might need to put some sunscreen on yourself, not on the plants. Once you've determined how much light you have in your space, you should really start to think about the care needs of the plants you're interested in. You don't want to choose plants that are going to need a ton of care if you know you're going to be out of work or taking weekends off. So it's good to focus on plants that have low maintenance needs. The ZZ in particular is a really great plant because it's so versatile. It can take high light and low light, and it really survives in drought conditions. The Sansevieria is also a really great plant for the office space. It can also be in high light and low light, and it's also one of the best air purifying plants. So if you're in an open office plan, it might be a great plant to keep on your desk. When you're thinking about where to actually place your plants, be sure you're thinking through how you're gonna take care of them. Hanging something over a lot of electronics where you're gonna to have to get on a ladder and water probably isn't a good idea. Choosing the right vessel for your plant is equally as important as the plant itself. You can choose a plant that has a drainage hole on the bottom, and it usually comes with a saucer to make sure you don't spill water on your desk. Or you can choose a planter that doesn't have drainage on the bottom. But it's really important if you're choosing a planter that doesn't have drainage, you need to include some kind of drainage material like aeration stone. One of the best planters you can use for your plant is actually one that's sub-irrigated. By that I mean that instead of watering at the top of the planter, you're actually gonna fill the bottom with water and so the plant can drink from the root system down below. The single biggest issue for office plants is how to take care of them long-term. If you've chosen the right plant for the light conditions that you have, then it's really all about the watering. What you want to avoid is what we call blind watering. That's when you look at a plant and you say, hmm, kind of looks thirsty, and you just water it. That's not really the way to water. You need to use more of your senses to figure it out. You really need to get comfortable touching your soil. It's also how you're going to get some of the best benefits of biophilia. You really need to engage with your plants and their environment. So when can I expect the stress reduction effect to kick in? As soon as you start appreciating your plants. <laughs>